sports fans, and welcome to the Oklahoma Sports Report OU Football Edition. One with a big sad face on it, by the way. Al Heshbeck, I'm Rick Heath here at Barcha Chetty. Al, yeah, a big sad face on OU's fans' face right now after the worst loss in OU Texas history this last uh, weekend. Bad performance. You, you knew they had no chance when Gabriel wasn't playing right then. Oh, you had no chance to win this well, game. Well, we talked about that last week during the OU Texas, you know, preview show. Okay? Right. When we were talking about very little chance, but you didn't think they would be embarrassed. No. Like they would. No. No. On both sides of the ball. Uh, now you're three and three. Yeah. What you're playing for right now, imagine OU halfway through the season playing to try to get to a bowl game. Well, yeah, try to get bowl eligible. Yeah. You know, I right now, Al, I'm just... I'm just really, in all honesty, I'm just hoping that they don't embarrass themselves worse. Because right now, everything is at the lowest point that I can remember since the John Blake era, and maybe even worse than that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it, it's really disheartening what's happening, what you're seeing. First half of the season, and now you got, you got Kansas coming in. When's the last time you know you fans said, Man, I don't know if we can beat, win this game. See, and that's the thing about it, you know. And and uh, what the bad thing about it is, is OU in Kansas right now. It's only a seven-point difference. Yeah, and Kansas played TCU a lot better than OU played them. Yeah, they, Had a great chance of beating them. Yeah, well, OU got embarrassed by TCU. And, and and so right now it is, can they win a game? And that's what we'll talk about. Hey, we're at Barchichetti here, where you can hear in the background. They're having trivia night. So they have trivia here at Barcha Chetty. They also have Monday night football, Thursday night football, and all the NBA games will be here at Barcha Chetty in the Deuce here in Oklahoma City. We'll be right back after this. Oh, man, dude, I really wish I could make that. Um, it's National No Pants Day, and that'd be kind of inappropriate. We actually just had gas station sushi, and you just don't want to chance that. We're going to be running tornado drills, like tornado drills all day. I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Okay, sports fans. You know, we do the Thunder Weekly each week. But there's a lot of things I like to support that are Oklahoma products. I like to go around and do shows from Oklahoma businesses. But one of the businesses I want to talk about is Prairie Wolf Distillery, now Wander Folk Spirits. Wander Folk Spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wander Folk Gin, Wander Folk uh, Vodka, and Old Moses by a bourbon. All of these are quality products uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So if you come to like Cohiba Lounge, ask for a Wander Folk uh, gin and tonic or ask for a Wander Folk vodka and tonic or a club special. It's getting where you can get that now. It's getting warmer. Uh, a vodka club special made with Wander Folk vodka. Great selection and you're supporting Oklahoma businesses. So support Oklahoma business. Ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wander Folk Spirit. EDS Paintless Dent Repair is your one-stop shop for auto body repair. Whether it be from hail damage, dents, scratches, or even glass replacement and repair, we can accommodate all your needs. Locally owned and operated since 2005, EDS Paintless Dent Repair is here for you. Give us a call at 405-476-1763 or go to edspaintlessdentrepair.com. At Laser Light Skin Clinic, our most popular treatment is now more affordable than ever. Right now, you can save up to 50% on Cool Sculpting, the number one choice for non invasive fat reduction. Our flexible treatment plans allow you to choose the option that is perfect for you. Focus on a single problem area or revive your life with a fresh new you. These are real results. For your personal Cool Sculpting consultation, call Laser Light Skin Clinic today. A new you awaits. Welcome back. Al Eshbeck, Rick Heath from Barchichetti here in Deep Deuce, where they have a great Sunday brunch. And they also fe feature Wanderfolk Spirits. That's right. Wanderfolk Spirits, the distillery 
our own distillery here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great vodka, great gin, great old Moses bourbon, and all kinds of others. Very, very well distilled spirits by Wander Folk Spirits are featured right here at Bar Chichetti. Out before we go on talk OU Kansas, which we were talking in the last segment, which is going to be a question in itself, let's do an autopsy, okay? We're going to pick apart the dead body of OU's defense and offense. Let's start first on the offensive side with that Dylan Gabriel, as you said, you knew that they were going to have a tough time, but you didn't realize how bad a shape the backup quarterback situation was for OU. Yeah, and that, that's on the coaches. I, 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 and I realize Rattler leaves, Caleb Williams leaves, and uh, you, they did a great job bringing in Dylan Gabriel. Uh, and you always say, you know, you, you're starting quarterback, better not get hurt. That's a lot of cool, but this was totally unacceptable. They basically had to change the offense to the Wildcat. Now, there have been talk that General Booty was going to be the star, and he had some kind of allergic reaction. I don't know if that's true or not. I know, but they said something something happened where he couldn't play. Yeah. So he was not available. So they had to go with Davis Bevel, and you know, and the young man just wasn't ready to play. You know, no. he didn't he, either. They didn't give him a good enough game plan to get him started, or they limited him so much that showing him they didn't have enough confidence in him. That he had no, they, he they had no, no shot. No doubt they had no confidence in him, okay, no doubt. So I'm going to give me a stat, and you tell me if you ever in your wildest imagination thought that this stat would come true. 38 yards passing. OU, one of the biggest, most uh, uh, explosive offensive programs in the nation in the last 25 years. 38 yards passing. Happened all the time in the wishbone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Remember, yeah, but at least, remember <laughs> Barry used to always say, yeah. hey, we're yeah. going to create a new stat. Pitch outs attempted and pitch outs completed. Yeah. You know, because if they would have done that, they still would have got more than 30. Yeah, it, 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 it was mind-boggling. How many different players threw, I think five different players threw a pass. Yeah, five different players. And the best pass thrown in the entire first half was thrown by the punter. On the hole, the yeah. holding for the fake field goal. He threw a little underhanded shot for, for the first down. That was the best pass thrown. Yeah, no, it was the uh, first time, shut out since Texas A&M uh, 1998. Yeah. Okay, so the offense without Dylan Gabriel was hamstrung from the beginning. But I, that, I, I feel they're going to be pretty good the rest of the year. Yeah, but I think the offense they got, you know, now it will depend on whether or not the offensive line is going to give them the blocking they need. Well, they did a, they did a good job. I think well, now Gabriel's missed passes, but I think the offense has it's been pretty good. And other than I, Gabriel I, 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 missing com passes, compared to the other side of the ball, you're right. I think good. I think it's been really. I think it's been one of the best ones in the Big Twelve. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll, so, we'll give that we'll give that to the plus side on that. With yeah. Dylan Gabriel coming back, and hopefully he'll be back against Kansas. And hopefully, you know, it'll be really explosive to get hit the guys that are wide open. They've been scoring despite him missing some wide open. Yeah, and, and he need he needs to be better. It's, and it's on knows him that. because. If, if he was in those pieces, this is often to be putting up a, a lot of points. Well, I think even if he would have played against and, Texas, it would have been a lot And, and when Wanya Morris got back, the offensive line been pretty good block, run blocking. So we'll, that, that will be conceded, okay, that the offense is going to be okay. But, you know, the one thing that I didn't imagine besides 38 yards passing was when Brent Venables was hired, I was one of those that thought, well, okay, good, because that will take care of one of the biggest problems OU's had in years, and that is a good defense. I thought it was a given, and and we saw it through first three games. We're going, yeah, we were right. It was a given. Uh, defensive backs weren't getting beat long. There was a great, uh, good tackling, a good great tackling, great pass rush, tackles for loss. As you point out, uh, number what? Uh, had 14, fourteen in the number one. Yeah, yeah, they were number one in the nation with fourteen tackles for loss. They were aggressive. The and what has happened since then? I, I mean, obviously they played better teams, but not to the extent that these teams are, are giving up 56 points to TCU. I mean, and then thinking that was the most embarrassing you could get 
and then getting shut out and, and giving up. And then, and, and then Texas and TCU took their foot off the a pedal. Yeah, they, they made sure that they didn't just exploit how More. bad it could be. Yeah. How bad it could be. So, you know, and I, and, and so the OU defense has gone from being able to put pressure on the quarterback to getting no pressure. They were leading the nation in tackles for loss. They've only had two in the last three games. One so, sack. And one sack. I mean, that that, that has gone the opposite way. So the, their, Brent Venables is going to have to come up with a way to do it. And I think I've got the answer for him. And we'll talk about that when we get back here at Barton City, the Oklahoma Sports Report. Al Esbeck, Rick Heath, we'll be right back. The painting professionals at Ray the Painter are committed to providing all of our customers excellent service and attention to detail. Since we started in 1991, Ray the Painter serves the entire OKC metro area. We do interiors, exteriors, residential, and commercial work. The experts at Ray the Painter offer custom finishes and glazes for cabinetry and woodwork, as well as spray, brush, roller, and trowel techniques to get the perfect look for your project. For a free estimate, call 405 605 3563 or visit us at paintokc.com. Let me tell you about a new Mexico Mexican restaurant brought to you by the same people here that have Bar Chichete. That's right, El Coyote is a new Mexican restaurant. That is from New Mexico style food. It's a great new restaurant by the same people that bring you Bar Chichete. You got to try it. 925 West Britain Road in Oklahoma City, New Mexico Mexican food style. You'll love it. Open every night. Uh, it's on B Britain Road. Go by and try it. You'll love the favorite of New Mexico style Mexican food. You can't find it anywhere else in Oklahoma City. So go to El Coyote, the same people that bring you Bar Chichetti. Okay, we have a special guest here today of the Oklahoma Sports Report. Mariah Calhor of Calhor Real Estate Group, correct? Cal Calhor Group Realty, but it Group works. Group Realty, right, one of those, one of those. Anyway, Mariah, Mariah Calhor. Um, it is a, uh, right now is a great time to be in real estate because there's lots of things going on. There's a lot going on. I will tell you, the last few years has been very different, challenging, very unknown, but I think we're finally walking into the season where things are gonna kind of level out. Sellers are kind of losing a little bit of their leverage and buyers are having the opportunity again to actually negotiate. So buyers coming in have a little bit more uh, leverage with yeah. price moving. Yes. And buyers, I mean, and sellers still have a good market. They do. They just may not have been the top side right now. Correct. And it may not be the feeding frenzy everybody was after. I mean, it was wild, but now we're kind of getting back to that normal flow, steady pace. And I can breathe. The realtors can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the sellers are going, okay. Okay, we can still do this. Um, the, uh, you know, all of the interest rate moves, how, yes. how is that work? I will tell you, interest rates are going up. I think they're kind of getting up into that six and seven range. I don't see a problem with that. I know most people who are used to that two and three, they're kind of like, oh my gosh. But I will tell you, and maybe you know this, interest rates once upon a time were up in like 18 and 19. So when we hear six and seven, I'm not worried. I, I'm comfortable with it. So. Well, you know, and, it's, and if you really look at it over a 30 year fixed, we're talking, you know, a, a few hundred dollars over Correct. a year's period of time. Right. When you break right. it down on a daily basis, it may be only a dollar or two a day. And you can always refinance. Yes, and, and then you can always bring it back down when yep. interest rates are more favorable. Right. And if you need any more information in the expert opinion of the expert, Mariah Calhor of Calhor Group Realty. Group yep. Realty. <laughs> Give them a call and they will find out. Or your Facebook page. Yes, anywhere. You can Google me and you'll find me and I'll help you out. There you go. Yep. Mar Mariah Calhor of Calhor Realty Group. And we're back. Bart Chichetti here in Deep Deuce. Rick Heath, Al Lesh back with the Oklahoma Sports Report. A great place, great food bar Chichetti has. It's a unique restaurant, a unique menu. You got to go online to find out about it. What a great place it is. And you can see behind us the big screen for all your favorite sporting events. A huge, huge big screen and great drink specials featuring wonderful spirits distillery here in Oklahoma that distills great spirits, including wonderful vodka and gin and Old Moses bourbon. Al, okay, so here's what my solution is. If I'm, if I'm advising, which nobody wants to hear my advice, but if I was advising Brent Venable, 
I wouldn't say, okay, we've either got to do one or two things. We've either got to stop the pass or we've got to stop the run. Well, all I would do is go back to early year with whatever they did. They stopped both the pass and the run. Well, right, that's, that's simple. Yeah, but now they're not doing either. Right, so why not go back to the four men? It stopped the pass, it stopped the run. If they can do it that way, that would be great. I don't know what else you could do. Well, here's what my suggestion. You either, you got to take a look, say, one, one, one uh, opponent at a time, Kansas. Kansas is coming in. They got their second-team quarterback coming in. Pretty good guy. By the way, a lot better than the second-team quarterback that OU's got. Uh, but Kansas having that kind of a problem. Uh, but anyway, I would say, okay, you either got to beat me with the pass or beat me with the But what do you do? You, 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 the the three-man front has done neither. So I what would, are you going to run? I would put eight in the box and say, beat me long. Or put nine back that, and rush two. Well, that the you kid know. threw for 200 some yards in the second half to back up. He had four touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> so they can do both. They can do both. I would hope so, but if you can't, you got to do something. You either got to stop the run or you got to stop the pass. You well, can't give up they're, they're, what they'll do, they'll try to stop the pass and they'll run for 500 yards. Well, if that that okay, did it look any worse than what Texas did? I I, I just I need to get go back to what they did the first three. They stopped the pass and they stopped the run. Can they do it? That's the question. It's the three-man run, run, run thing is not working. It's not working with the rush or the pass. Yeah. So they got to do something different. Yeah, they got to do something different. I mean, it, they, it's just, they got at least four down linemen they can put up. They have no nose tackle. They got no, you know, they have the, the tackles are better than than the defensive end. So they got to do something. But the defense end were pretty good in the four-man rush. Well, they looked pretty good, you know, and everybody seemed to know where they were at. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they were better. And right. the linebackers are lost now. Yeah, it, the I linebackers mean, have no idea where they're supposed to be. The defensive backs don't know how to pass somebody around in the zone. And defense. missing tackling. I mean, yeah. we all well, thought. They look when lost. It, we talked on. about it. They look lost. The yeah. defense looks lost. I think they I uh, Maybe the, the, the answer is simplifying. That's what everybody simplify everything. Well, the base defense they played, as you said, with the four-man rush, played pretty well the first three games. Yeah. And Kent State's a pretty dang good offensive yeah. score with Nebraska. Yeah. So, you, I, I, it, it, it's, fr it, it's, it's hard to understand why, and Brent's a, really a smart defensive mind, out in it. Why? When he realized we're not getting any pressure, you got to do something to get pressure. You got to do something, you know. And and you know there there are a lot of people that that have, have been talking about. Well, he's got it too complicated. And so you hit up on that. Maybe back off a little bit. Get this, a bit more basic defense. This is a big week week for Brent in, yeah. as far as making changes. I mean, if, is he locked in? Yeah. To that. And regardless of what the outcome is, oh, they run it, because they're what, make what they're doing now ain't working. It ain't working at all. And unfortunately, it's not working to the tune of three straight losses and the most embarrassing loss in the OU Texas history. We'll be right back to talk Kansas and Oklahoma from Bar Chichetti right after this. And welcome back. Final segment, Oklahoma Sports Report. Al Eshbeck, Rick Heath from Barchichetti, where they have a great brunch every Sunday from 11 to 2 p.m. with live music when the weather permits. But it changed, the menu changes, so you got to go online to find out what the, what the uh, menu is going to be for that week. But it's a great brunch every Sunday here at Barchichetti on 2nd Street in Deep Deuce. Al, you know, the, on the offensive side, uh, in order to generate the offense, Dylan Gabriel comes back. We think we think Jeff Levy's going to be doing, you know, will make the adjustments he needs to. And if Dylan Gabriel makes a good throws, the offense ought to be pretty good. But here's what I, I could not understand at the get the Texas game is the game plan did not include Marvin Mims. Because you have a quarterback who's going to throw the ball. I know. <laughs> but so this time, if Dylan Gabriel's there, I'm getting Marvin Mims the ball yeah. 15, 20 well, times. Well, they, they tried against TCU to get the ball a bunch. Yeah. And they missed him on some. Uh, oh, threw him on one or two when he was wide open. Yeah, they, so. they really made a, a good effort against TCU trying to get in the ball. But I'm with you. They got to get Marvin Mims you the know, ball. You know, even if Dylan Gabriel comes back, which we're hoping he does for OU fans, I still keep some Wildcat. You know, just to give him a yeah. different look. I, that worked well. I, I totally agree. That's a great point. I, I think that, yes, absolutely. They, they got the wild pack 
package in there. They practice it. So I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, and, and yeah. Because, and, you know, and, and the, when the offense. And great in short yardage situations. Yeah, it's, it's like the old belldozer, you know, except instead of bell, you got, you got, you know, <laughs> Braden Willis. Six foot five, two hundred and sixty pound guy back there. Pretty good size yeah, for short yeah, yardage. Yeah, no. And no, I like I, how he picked his way, you know. And and then Farouk, I love when he was touching the ball on the on the little jet sweeps off of the Wildcat package. I love that. Yeah, he got a burst to him. He does. I mean, he can he can get to the edge. He's one of the few guys. I mean, as good as Gray is, as good as Major, they don't have that speed no, no, that can get to the edge. No, no. And Farouk yeah. can do that. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I like it a little bit of Wildcat. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Mix it up. So uh, le- now that allows Levy a lot of latitude on throwing, running, and you know you get Gray and, and, and Majors the ball. They ran the ball against Texas pretty well when they could. You yeah, know, until and, it got and, out of hand. Eric Gray is really good. Eric Gray is a really good running That's what back. I'm saying, and they were running the ball yeah. well until it got out of hand, and then Texas goes, well, "You're not going to pass." Yeah. So when you can't pass, we're going to go ahead and stop the run. That's when that came to a halt. But, uh, you know, so the offense that of their Jeff Levy, I think, can dial up some good offense. The question is, just as we went over it, you know, um, can the defense come in? So here's my point. You keep the other team's offense off the field. You run the ball. You control the clock. You get your offense going. No more excuses. Run the dang ball. Well, but, but what's Kansas State's weakness? Is it their run defense or pass defense? Yeah, I know. But so, what I'm saying is if you can keep the offense, the other team's offense off, I, uh, off uh, the yeah, field, I, yeah. so, you know, not, not so much uh, of the up-tempo, just a good, solid uh, offensive attack and keep the other team's offense off. Yeah, I tell you what, against Kansas, you should be able to do what you want to do. Well, you okay. should be able to. But, you should be able to do the, what I call the Billy Jack offense. We're going to run off this tackle with this back. And there's yeah, I, yeah you just said get the ball to Marvin Mims. Well, I know, but I'm talking about <laughs> once you get the thing going, once you've got control, okay, and you want to, you, then you want to just exert your will. Yeah, well, you got about a three-touchdown lead on it, but can they do get three touchdowns? I lead? don't know, but what they're going to have to do is or, they're going to have to exert their will at some point. Yeah, but uh, or, or you got to get the ball to Marvin Mims. I, I mean, that, that's that. what they that's they, what, they got to come out and get the ball to Marvin Mims. I, all the way through. They're going to have to run the ball and get the ball yeah. to him. But, if, hey, hey. If Gay- and Dillon- Levy is a guy. He's a run first guy. I mean, we've seen that before. Well, and I like and, that. You know, so. Uh, but, Between Dylan Gabriel but, and Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims is the best offensive player. you got to make him the, the star. Ball He's the difference maker. Absolutely. He's the difference maker. And then on the on the defensive side, you got to hope that you go back to a basic more solid defense and where you're going to get some stop. And maybe and maybe where you simplify things. I don't know if they're talking about being too calm. I don't I don't know. But I just know the last three games, what they've done has not worked. And so they can't continue to do that. No. That is the absolute definition of insanity. Continue to do the same thing and expecting different results. You gotta get a pass rush. You gotta no, get a pass no rush. No matter who's quarterback, and they're gonna kill you. Yes. Kill you if you don't get a you pass know, and, rush. And Kansas, Kansas, to their credit, Leopold's done a good job getting those guys, you know, exciting now. They're, they believe in themselves. And so and when you're playing a young team and an up and coming team like that, you gotta take that away from them. And you well, gotta, and, 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 and also, you def- no, if, if, if Daniel doesn't play, because he is a great runner. He is a great runner, and that's why, I mean, he's better than Martinez and Martinez and Dugan. He's better yeah, than Yeah, no Dugan. doubt about it. Yeah. So if he's playing, I mean, it's gonna, they got the work cut out. It's going to be tough. Um, okay, real quickly, OSU, TCU, your thoughts on that? OSU, the, the uh, underdog, I like OSU. Mike Gundy's done an amazing job with, at, at Oklahoma State. He, I mean, he really has uh, TCU's high-powered offense, but uh, Oklahoma State's defense is better than uh, TCU's. And Oklahoma State's defense and Spencer Sanders is pretty good. You know, that's the two best quarterbacks in the Big 12 right now. Uh, yeah, I, I, Dugan, yeah, Dugan yeah. And Sanders. Or, Sanders. Although, before it's over with, the kid at Texas may be better than both of them. Well, yeah, but right now going into Yeah, because it, he got hurt. Yeah. When someone going, that throws 130 yards against Alabama in one quarter. Yeah, uh, pretty good. He's pretty yeah. good. And you kept saying that, and I didn't realize that until we saw him in person. He made it look effortless in yeah. some of those throws. Yeah. But right now, the two Because best, he hasn't played. Yeah, the two best quarterbacks yeah. with the stats 
right. Sanders, Absolutely. Duke. And, and Sanders is big tough. You get him in the apple field, oh my God, he's good. I, you know, I, I happen to think for some reason TCU might, it might be their year. I, I'm picking TCU in this game. Uh, I'm going to go with Oklahoma State in the end. And you go to Oklahoma State. Okay, let's go to Kansas and, and the OU. I got, I got, um, I got OU 31-28. I'll go 42-38, to 38, Oklahoma. Yeah, it's going to be. going to be a lot of points being scored, scored in this game. A lot of scored, a lot of points scored because right now OU hasn't demonstrated they can stop anybody. No. And with Bill and Gabriel back, I think their points will take care of themselves. That's going to do it for this week's show, the Oklahoma Sports Report from Bar to Chetty. We'll see you next week from the Oklahoma Sports Report.